Can you tell everyone what our friends at Target have been up to while I finish setting up? I got you. Through their Black Beyond Measure campaign, Target is celebrating and elevating Black success all year round. We told you last fall about the HBCU Design Contest, where the winners were showcased last month. Shout out to Trey representing the Real HU, Hampton University. They've also got the Buy Black Product Hub, where you can shop for Black-owned and founded brands. Target is out here uplifting the Black community year-round, y'all. If you want to learn more about how Target continues to support Black entrepreneurs, students, and creatives, visit Target.com backslash Black Beyond Measure. It can be a dark world sometimes. Don't be afraid to be a source of light. It can be a dark world sometimes. But don't be afraid to be a source of light. Peace, good people. Peace. Fee, how you feeling today? I'm feeling all right. How are you? I'm feeling present. Present? Yeah. I like that. I'm well. I got to do a few things that help me be present for this moment. But uh, I'm feeling good. That's what's up. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Soul Affirmations with Felicia and Kariga. With Kariga and Felicia. And you, the listener, on the Black Black Love Love Podcast Podcast Network. Podcast Network. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you have an affirmation? I do have an affirmation. For your affirmation? Yeah, but before we jump right into the affirmation, I talked about feeling present. And I just kind of was recapping for myself what helped me get here. Mm. And the affirmation that maybe helps us all get to this space, I want to read from page 26 of my publication, A Toolkit for Reflection and Manifesting the Light Within. 26, eh? All right. Yeah. (laughs) Today, I will take time to honor a sacred moment, no matter the circumstance around me. My happiness is my responsibility, and I'm okay with that. Today, I will take time to honor a sacred moment, no matter the circumstance around me. Hmm. Yeah, that kind of operationalizes this work. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe... It would be fitting today if we talked a little bit about honoring sacred moments, Mm. no matter the circumstance. And for me, I find it most beneficial to my day and the way I desire to show up for my responsibilities in a given day. If I make time in the morning, I find that morning routines are really important for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think of it as an opportunity to set the baseline for the day. Mm -hmm. And I could then choose to respond from the baseline, how I inform myself. So that means no matter what comes to me, I have a point of reference for the day. Mm -hmm. And... Morning routines also help me ground myself, assess the day and any given amount of tasks or responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And it helps me to remember. And I think the power to remember is, is sacred. It's like, it's like a, it's like this technology within us. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, I don't have all the science on how the memory works, but when we remember, we have the power to recall. It can inform us. It can encourage us. It can help us pass tests. I think it's unique, right? When we talk about like memory and academic measures of progress and how you recall the information and helps you perform to whatever standard yeah. the metric is. I'm immediately recalling my experiences in grad school, learning about short-term and long-term memory. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think beyond our short-term or long-term, we have like this cellular memory, spiritual memory. Mm. It's particularly around adversity. 
Mm-hmm. So what I know as fact is whatever anyone's hardest day was in the past, they're still here. <laughs> so there was something in them. They performed to some level of stride, endurance, strength, pivot, rest. But there's something in them that allowed them to show up today. And that is also true for me. I appreciate you saying that, that piece. And I admittedly, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I love the way you frame that. Mm-hmm. I was um, just kind of recalling as you started talking about morning routines, mm-hmm. recalling in 2019 what it felt like to not want to be up in the morning, like dreading mm-hmm. the morning, mm-hmm. just in general. Mm-hmm. The way that the sun would feel, it was super bright. I just, I remember the details of how it would come in, how my body felt. Mm -hmm. I had cold sweats. I smelled like milk. Mm -hmm. And I remember always trying to like snuggle up against you because I was cold. Mm. Do you remember that? I don't as much remember the snuggling Man, as much as I remember is, the milk. It's just funny about I remember me because, the milk for sure. <laughs> because I'm not a snuggler. I'm not a sleep snuggler. Exactly. I actually prefer not to be snuggled mm-hmm. um, when resting. But this called for something different. Mm. I was trying to get warm. <laughs> mm. But I make mention of all of those very specific details because I remember them. Mm. And I very, very much remember like not having a routine at that Mm. point right like Mm. and also how difficult it was to try and put myself back in the space of having a routine Mm -hmm. and how quickly like my body my spirit or or what have you would let me know that these things are not for me anymore Mm. and then challenging it was to accept that but as you just framed what the hard days and how you make strides somehow in them Right. I'm now at the point of my life where I've always valued having a routine, Mm -hmm. but I am thirsting for it. Mm. Prior than you know, because in in the the middle of the grief, the height of it, the low of it, within the last three years, approaching three years now, I couldn't predict what my morning would feel like, you know? Yeah, that was a large part of our life. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what the morning would look like and making room for whatever we needed. Right. Mm -hmm. Listening to you, I listen to every part of your detail, but I can remember the milk. (laughs) And, but what's fascinating about scent and memory, I remember the feeling of producing the milk and no baby to nurse it. I also remember that in that time you donated your breast milk. And I just want to take a second to acknowledge how profoundly loving that is. Mm -hmm. And somewhere out there, there's a little strong baby. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) You know, who can go on to light the world in their own way. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to honor that. And I want to count that. I also want to maybe challenge a little bit of what I heard as okay. n- not having a routine and how much you resisted the routine. And I want to bring you to recollection of a conversation we had. I think we had it on this podcast mm-hmm. having to do with how you evaluated yourself based on prior metrics, Mm -hmm. how you performed at a task. Mm -hmm. And when we use prior metrics to measure and inform who we are presently, it can cause conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in this same way, I think that trying on the old routine is what your body rejected. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. the new routine was making room. The new routine was taking time. Yeah. The new routine was when that sun hits me, 
here's what I'm doing. It makes me feel the same way nearly every day. So that's why I lay here. That's why I cry. That's why I punch the bed. Mm-hmm. And that's why some at some point I choose to roll over and put my feet on the ground. <laughs> Those were all days we still approached, all days we still started. Mm-hmm. And there's power in that when we remember. Hmm. It informs so much. It could even inform today's gratitude. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, thank you, body, for making it this far. Yeah. Thank you, God, for giving me access to my faculties and my mind to get up. And despite not liking the way the sun felt, thank you, sun, for keeping on rising. <laughs> because it measured the power of that love we would come to know. Time right. was the only metric for it. Right, right. So we needed the sun to rise despite not liking the way it felt. Mm -hmm. It was doing what it needed to do for the greater system to work. So maybe there are some constants we don't like, but they aren't necessarily bad for us. It challenges us, Mm -hmm. but it grows us. Something about that drive to process each day and to by choice begin another one says something in accordance to how we remember and what that power is that is why for me the morning is an important time to have that space Mm -hmm. to remember Mm -hmm. to learn to give thanks to fill my cup just take inventory Mm. because I don't know what the day will bring and I tell you there's been some days where the morning routine was great and by five o'clock I'm cussing (laughs) somebody out somebody out (laughs) right yeah so for me it is increasingly important that I make time for myself in the morning Rika, before we go any further, can we take a minute to talk about joy? We can always take a moment to talk about joy. (laughs) Well, one thing that brought me joy this week uh, was when Kamali was squeezing that oatmeal and that banana and that saliva. No, that was not joy. (laughs) But another thing that brought me joy was my weekly Target run. You know, I love to go and I was able to shop black owned and found brands to get everything we needed for our Ah! space. Is that where the new coffee is from? Well, you know, we you know we need to have our coffee. <laughs> I love making sure we are surrounded by joy every day. If you want to surround yourself with a little joy and help uplift black creatives, visit target.com backslash black beyond measure to learn more. I remember in the early onset of the grief, my routine was getting out of bed and staying by the bedside. Mm. My Bible sat right there and I did all my quiet time right there in the room with you so I can observe how your day was starting. Mm -hmm. So it can inform me what my next steps would look like. But I could not start that day the same time you did. Mm. That wasn't my routine. And I think that in many cases, the practice of affirmations They require time and repetition. Yeah. It isn't the saying of it once. Right. That doesn't totally inform the spectrum of how it applies. It's when we revisit them. It's when we try again. It's when we reframe them. Mm -hmm. They speak to us differently based upon where we are presently. So I wanted to make room to. Learn more about how you affirm, how our audience affirms themselves. <laughs> when do you find it useful? Is it mm. a morning, evening, afternoon check-in type of situation? Is it 
you know, some folks listen to the album. Uh, you actually be playing that. Joke, I but. do. I, I do. And I, I'm doing it more these days than I have previously. You know, I, I had mentioned on the on the podcast that I am writing morning pages. Sometimes those pages don't happen in the morning. Mm-hmm. I've been having afternoon pages. This week were a lot of evening pages. Uh-huh. And I even asked myself, okay, like, why am I doing this if the goal is to do it in the morning? But I really just want to honor the uh, repetition of it mm. and just meet myself where I said I want to go mm-hmm. and honor that things are going to change. And every every day is not going to look the same, right? It can't. Like, it's a new day. And so having respect for that and also grace with myself as I try to find those pockets of time. But if I am focused on it, I know I can get to it. Man, even last night, I was just like, why am I doing this? So I'm at the end of the day and I'm tired. But um, I realized, no, it is the the practice of it, even when I don't feel like it. Sometimes there isn't any type of enlightenment or anything for me. Mm-hmm. But rather, it is just the practice coming back to the practice Hmm. And uh, I know I kind of went on a stream there, but no, that's a great one. But I, I have found that okay, what I can do if I don't have time to write, what I can do is play the affirmations. So I try to make sure, like, all right, if I'm going to get up, this is on my second wake up, or maybe my third, depending on how Kamali is feeling through the night. But uh, what I try to make sure that I do is care for myself by going to the restroom, brushing my teeth, water on my face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make the bed. Mm -hmm. Get that bed made, right? Like if I can get all of these things in order, then. If not, you know I'm going to come stay. I know you are. (laughs) And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And and do all of these things while the affirmations are playing as a a way to rehearse the knowings. Uh Because I know I have a goal, right, Uh each day. But if if I'm not able to tend to it at that moment, then I can at least fill my cup in, yeah. a, in another way. So I yeah. like to have them in the morning and I also like to have them playing in the afternoon. That that sounds good to me. <laughs> I think um, I also want to assess what you just said. OK. And offer a reframe, not a challenge. OK. What's a reframe? What is it? <laughs> well, you described in your writing experience, it's the artist way, correct? Yeah. You described that you have trouble getting to the morning pages and that sometimes they happen in the evening or even at night and you ask yourself why. And later in your recollection, you also shared that there can be one or even two mornings before you're your morning rise. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about how challenging that can be to have so many experiences in the morning before it is truly what you define as morning. So if you're waking up, because some people's morning, there are p- people who are listening. Okay, they're not like me and they're not like you. Okay, but there are people who, <laughs> whose morning starts at four. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's their morning. Mm-hmm. Five. I'm not. I'm not one of them. Okay. Oh. Six a.m. is like the best I can give you. <laughs> I ain't doing it if I don't have to. <laughs> but get what I'm saying. There is grace for you that I'd like you to claim for yourself. Because anybody who is having to wake up once or twice, and it's not the middle of the night. It's some people's morning, just to get to what you define as your morning, or you want to have your morning pages. To me, naturally, it sounds like there should be grace because you are coming to the practice as best as you can. Mm-hmm. But it isn't after, right? I would I would theorize that the that the construct around this writing practice is one coming to their morning pages after what we theorize is a full night's rest, <laughs> giving the mind time to renew, to dream, right, to be new. Right. That's not where you are in this stage of Kamali's life. So I commend you for attending to your writing the way you can. And it's admirable when I see you take time to write. Thank you. 
<laughs> so I guess the same question is posed for you when, when you like your affirmations. <laughs> what? This is probably one of the first times on this segment that that just sounded so suggestive of something else. Did it? <laughs> yeah, when you like your affirmations. <laughs> Yeah, I, t- I take my affirmations whenever I can get them. <laughs> no, but um, the idea around, for me, it's really important to make room in the morning. Oh, yeah. I love the way my body, my mind, my thoughts interact with the sun, particularly in this house. Mm-hmm. There is a existing relationship and conversation. I also find that like an evening simmer down, right? The the time where Mm -hmm. I want to experience something other than technology. Mm -hmm. I'll reach for a read. But I, um, for me, the morning routine, it just sets me up Mm -hmm. for all my responsibilities Mm -hmm. and the ones I don't see coming. Mm -hmm. And if we could, but I recognize like not everybody's life in accordance to how their responsibilities are set up Mm -hmm. gives them that morning. I was just thinking that. Yeah. But we all do have a choice on what we think about when we take our first breaths. That Mm -hmm. is our choice. No matter what the phone call or technology is, the idea is if you don't take time for yourself, you cannot show up for anyone else. So you're not stealing time. You're making time. You're using time. Mm. So even if that is deep breaths in the morning, I don't know how to take those deep breaths for me because of what I've seen around breathing. I don't know how to take those deep breaths without thanking God. Mm -hmm. So there is room for me um, to thank God for a day. Mm -hmm. There's room for me to be grateful for a day. But I could also maybe folks who don't have as much time or discretionary time in their day. Maybe they could use soul affirmations as an alarm on their phone. That would be dope. At least it creates that relationship. Yeah. Moments to affirm themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that was the intent too, right? Yeah. The well, design of it. The, des- the true design was so that families could commute together and process it before the kids went to school. Mm-hmm. That's why I created it. Because I would see young people begin their day just at the wire understandably because it's hard getting a family out the house it's hard okay it's, it's hard getting us out this exactly house. it's damn near traumatic for me and Kamali ain't even got words yet she just is, is and let and let somebody invite us somewhere <laughs> and we're making it on to, time and we're trying to get there on time <laughs> what was <laughs> that's on you <laughs> <laughs> what was <laughs> what is she you thought I was going to make it on time. That's on you. <laughs> That's on you. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of reflecting on what it was that you said, that everybody has a choice. Mm-hmm. And how, what was it, how they start their day? What we think about. What we think about. Everyone has a choice in what we think about. Mm-hmm. Okay. I am... Um, wrestling with that as a as an idea just because i know there are so many things that moderate choice behaviors Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to fit that in the frame of processing with all due respect to the moderators of choice behavior when we recognize what our choices are Mm. So everyone is actually choosing. Some are choosing from A through B, A through C, A through D, A through G, A through Z. 
many of us aren't aware of the things we can choose to think about. Got it. So you think about what you've been trained to think about. You think about what mm -hmm. your habits think about. Right. Which is why we have to frame new habits to frame new thoughts of reference. Right. Right. Someone can wake up and compare themselves to something every day. Mm hmm. No matter what the moderators are, that's a choice. Yep. You can be waking up for tryouts, right? I hear those are really tough. <laughs> no, for real though. And it can, you can be anxious, right? Mm -hmm. Because you may not be high on the depth chart. It's still a choice to compare. Mm -hmm. right? We have an unlimited amount of choices only when we're aware i choose love because i know it's most powerful i choose gratitude because of its return of investment i love that as an affirmation hmm. i choose love and i choose gratitude as absolutely <laughs> as a return on investment it has the highest return gratitude yeah. does for me and nothing's more powerful than love. So I choose those things first. That's what side of time I want to be on. But I recognize I have love and empathy for folks who have not yet arrived at that. Mm -hmm. Because I also recognize that I'm waking up in my home. Right. Mm -hmm. I come downstairs and it feels away and looks away and i know what it is to be in borrowed space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know what it is to wake up and want to get out the way right but there's still this sacred moment that first opening of the eyelids it's a miracle it's a miracle each day is a new choice a new a new blessing no matter what the challenge is ahead but I've only learned that from taking inventory of several days. Mm. When we recognize that life is not just something happening to us, but happening inside of us. That's why I choose. That's why I affirm. Mm. When I go to that affirmation, life is not just something happening. around. Page 28. Ah, you had it. Life is not just something happening around me. Life is something happening inside of me. And today I will take time to explore what that means. I hope it creates an invitation for you to explore what that means. Even when life is hard. Especially when it's hard. Mm. Because those are the moments we need to affirm the most. Those are the moments that send the rushing feelings of flight or fight. And that's when we need to affirm ourselves the most mm. so that we remember there's power there. I thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Soul Affirmations with Felicia and Kariga. Kariga and Felicia. And I really enjoyed today's finding. I did too. I love the approach. I love the reframe. Yes. And I love how you brought it back to the hindsight that those hard days become and needing to remember them. They teach me how to approach all days. Hey, my hard days teach me how to approach all days. I'm grateful for them both. Come on now. Isn't that from your publication? It is, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking in your Hey, y'all, I real life just <laughs> saw her looking through. I sure did. My text. I did. That's okay. I said it. <laughs> but that's the power of one love. Hey. Thank you to our executive producers, Cody and Tommy Oliver, to our producer, Crystal Hill, to our ever so talented. Hey. Thank you all. Be sure to follow, comment, engage. Send us a question. I thought about that. Yeah, I'm Ooh, ready. A question. I could take some questions. Send them to Felicia. Send them to Felicia. Yeah, send them. Send them. Yeah. <laughs> Big love. Peace. Peace.